Greetings, Body of Messiah. Mark Pulley here with Yahweh Yeshua Assembly in Fort Myers, Florida, bringing you another teaching from Yah's Laws and Commandments, His Torah, on this first day of the week. And so I pray that your Shabbat was awesome. I pray you had a good day of rest, as well as getting into Yah's Word and as well as fellowshipping with the believers. This morning, when I say this morning, I mean real early this morning, I couldn't fall asleep last night, so I was awake until 4 a.m. receiving this teaching from Yahweh and from His Spirit. And so I'm going to share it with you and it's in reference to Yahshua versus the name Jesus just for a title and this was how it all started would a person from Jamaica be named a Russian name so think about this and this is the whole purpose of this teaching and what kept coming over me from Yahweh was to cause people to really think and some of it is just using common sense to really examine some of the things that the Roman church has gotten us into thinking and believing and accepting as biblical truth when if we use our thinking and if we use common sense and just examine it like an attorney examines the evidence he examines the facts and when he examines the facts he can then come up with a conclusion and so when you and I will examine these facts, this evidence, then we can come up with a conclusion on whether or not it's okay to use the name Jesus, or whether or not we should use the name Jesus, what it represents, or we should use the name Yahshua, or some people say Yahshua, some people say Y-E-S-H-U-A, and there's different ways to pronounce it. Um, the importance is not how you pronounce it. The importance is the name itself. So, would a person from Jamaica be named a Russian name? Think about that. Would a person from Hawaii be named a African name? Would a person that is Polish be named a Mexican name. So these were just three nationalities, nations, and if you went into the average home in these nations, they, a Jamaican would but not be named a Russian name. It, it wouldn't someone from Hawaii wouldn't be named an African name or vice versa. And someone in Poland would not be named a Mexican or a Latin or a Hispanic name as well. So the answer is no, they would not. So that is real key to this teaching to understand that a Jamaican would not have a Russian name. A Hawaiian would not have an African name. And a person from Poland would not have a Mexican or Latin name or vice versa. You could say a Mexican wouldn't have a Polish name. When was the last time you saw someone from the Latin countries? having a Polish name or having a name that was not familiar with the country he or she was from. 
And the answer is, you wouldn't. You don't see that. In the same manner of thought, a Hebrew or the Hebrew Jewish Messiah who lived in the first century would not be named a Roman Greek name that didn't even exist during that time and it didn't exist till approximately 1600 years later in the 1600s. We need to think we need to look at this evidence. Now, if you choose to ignore the facts, that's a different story. But let's not be ignorant or uninformed, but we need to think. We need to use the common sense and the wisdom Yahweh has given us. We all were taught a bunch of Roman pagan lies concerning this name Jesus. That it was the Messiah, the Savior, that lived during the first century, that was the son to Mary and Joseph, a Hebrew Jewish couple who lived Torah, who kept Sabbath, who kept the feast days, so on and so forth, and he was going to have a Roman Greek name that is tied to idolatry and sun god worship? I don't think so. The Hebrew Jesus Messiah and Savior was never named anything other than the name Yahweh gave to the angel to give to Yahshua's Hebrew Jewish parents. And that would be a name, not a name that man invented. See, when you look in the book of Revelation and you do a study on Babylon and on the great whore of Babylon and mother Babylon and daughter Babylon you will see that it's a religious system and this religious system invented and made up the name Jesus and they, ch ch you know, there weren't Bibles when this took place in the third century through Constantine. But when they did come out with Bibles, it was the Romans scribes that wrote and translated the scriptures. And they changed so many things in there to get you and I deceived into thinking and accepting things that were not biblical, that are not biblical, and that do not line up with Hebraic Jewish culture, content, or the traditions of that day. Nobody that was Jewish or Hebrew would have named their son Jesus because that name did not exist even at that time so we need to think about it think about this as well this Hebrew Jewish man kept the Sabbath not the first day of the week that was the first day of the week was dedicated to Sun God worship and the seventh day of the week was dedicated to Yahweh and this Hebrew Jewish Messiah kept the Sabbath, not the first day. Also, this Jewish Hebrew Messiah kept Torah. He kept the feast days. He did not keep any pagan holidays. 
And when you look at the scripture, it says in through the Apostle John that as the Messiah walked, you and I are to walk. You and I are to do the things that the Messiah did. We are to live like the Messiah lived. A holy, separated life. Committed to Yahweh's laws and commandments. Now when you think about it, this person that they've invented named Jesus, he couldn't have kept the Sabbath. He couldn't have kept Torah because he was never a real person. He was a figment of someone's imagination. You know how children sometimes will have an imaginary friend? Well, they talk to that friend, but that friend doesn't really exist. They will even give him a name, and but that person doesn't really exist. Just like superheroes, Superman, um, I don't know the names of many other superheroes because I don't watch all that stuff. But nonetheless, just think of superheroes. They don't really exist. They're just someone's imagination. They're in someone's imagination. They don't really exist. And see, Jesus was not Mary and Joseph's son because that name didn't exist and he didn't exist. Now the Hebrew Messiah truly did exist. Existed. But his name was a Hebrew name. Not this Western Roman Greek name that's named after a deity that is connected with sun god worship and paganism. Many say they believe in the Messiah. And many say they follow him. So let's examine the evidence. Many say they believe in this Hebrew Jewish Messiah. But they really don't. And I'm going to show this to you with evidence. When you say that you believe, and those that say that they believe in this Hebrew Jewish Messiah, they keep the Sabbath. They, they do not eat unclean foods. They do not have, and they do not build images, statues, idols. They do not have them in their home. They do, do, they, they do not become part of it. They do not change anything or add anything to the scriptures. They do not change or falsify Yahweh's name or Yahshua's name. They live according to the Torah. They don't try to change it. They don't try to excuse it. They follow the same principles and patterns of worship that Yahshua and the first believers followed. But now, those that say they believe in this Hebrew Messiah, but they call him Jesus, one, that was not a name that was found in Israel or in Jewish culture. So it goes back to, would a Jamaican name their son with a Russian name? And no, he would. They wouldn't. So the name Jesus could not have been the Messiah's name because one, it never existed. And those that say they believe in the Jewish Messiah, they keep the first day of the week as the day of worship which is dedicated to sun god worship. Now, the Messiah never did. Those that say they believe in the Hebrew Messiah, they changed the Father's name from Yahweh 
and call him Lord, which means Baal, and call him God, which just is a title that could reference demonic gods, demonic beings, as well as the Creator. Nowhere will you find Yahshua or the disciples in the original Hebrew ever doing that. There are other things that people that say they believe in this Hebrew Messiah, but they call him Jesus, things they do that you will not find in the Hebraic scriptures. You will not find Yahshua, Paul, Peter, James, John, or anybody in the first century or first couple centuries even doing. And so this evidence proves they really don't believe in or have accepted and received this Hebrew Jewish Messiah Savior that Yahweh sent to the earth to redeem man. What they do believe in is what Constantine and Rome has taught them. And see, for many, it's not that they're wicked, evil people. They've just been taught a bunch of lies and things that Rome perverted and twisted and changed so that it would line up with their sun god theology and so they could trap and deceive people into thinking that it was all about the true Messiah. Think about this as well. We know for a fact that the Hebrew Jewish Messiah lived in and walked the streets of Jerusalem. He was physically there at some point in his life. This created invention by Rome of the name of the Messiah. This person, Jesus, never did live in Rome. I mean, never did live in Jerusalem or walk the streets of Jerusalem <clears throat> because he was an invention. He was a figment of someone's imaginations. It was what they created. There was an agenda behind it. And this agenda, many have not seen. But there are many, not as many, but there are quite a few that have seen it, that the eyes of their understanding have been opened, and they recognize the true agenda of Rome's pagan sun god worship and the false name they attach to the Hebrew Messiah, they've recognized it and they've renounced it. They've done away with it. Are you going to believe in the real Hebrew Jewish Messiah or the fabricated made up one whose name did not exist until the 1600s. Why haven't you been taught by Rome to keep the Sabbath since the Savior kept the Sabbath, since the disciples kept the Sabbath? Why did Rome never teach Christians or people that believe they're believers, why did they never teach them about the Sabbath or about the feasts or about the Torah? Why did they try to get you to believe that it was nailed to the tree and done away with? And it wasn't. Because Rome's Savior never did these things. The invention that Rome came up with, the name they invented of who the Savior was, he was actually connected to uh, Semiramis, Baal, and Tammuz, 
and sun god worship and sun gods. So he never would have done these things because he wasn't Hebraic. He wasn't Jewish. He wasn't Hebrew. He wasn't the person that Mary carried around in her womb for nine months and gave birth to. Think about this. People, we've got to think about this. And I'm not saying these things to be ugly or to be critical, but I'm saying these things because Yahshua said to the Jews, if you continue in my word, in his Torah, in his laws and commandments, then the truth will set you free. Research what I am saying. Think about it. Research it. Pray about it. Look in the scriptures and you will see that what I'm sharing with you is accurate. Rome doesn't want you to know the truth about who the real Hebrew Messiah is. Because if you hear the truth and the God of this world is removed from blinding you, then you will see this falseness, falsity if that's even a word. You will see this deception. You will see the lies that Rome and Christianity have taught so much of us. And you will renounce it. You will depart from it. You will turn away from it. And you will begin to follow the Hebrew Jewish Messiah and Savior, Yahshua HaMashiach. And you will put your faith in Yahweh, in Yahweh's Torah, in His laws and commandments that begin from Genesis and goes all the way through Revelation. It's consistently in even what's called the New Testament. They kept the Sabbath. They kept the Torah. They kept the feasts. They obeyed Yahweh. And when they failed, they repented. When they got born from above, people that were pagans and Greeks, they were then grafted into Israel, and they were as much Israel as the native born. And they went to synagogue to learn Torah. Why? There were no Bibles in those days. The only way that they could learn Torah was to hear it, and they would have to hear it through the rabbis. And they had to make sure, and this is what Yahshua came, stop twisting and perverting the Torah with your man-made traditions. And that's what Rome and Christianity has done. They've come up with so many man-made traditions that we have accepted and thought they were biblical facts. And they're not. Now there's a little mixture in there just to get it to look biblical. But it's not. And when you turn to your, to your Hebrew Bible, you will turn to Yahweh and Yahshua, the Creator, who literally walked the streets of Jerusalem. Think about these things. You may know a deity Rome calls Jesus. And you may do things that Rome has taught you to do, like call the Creator Lord, which means Baal. You may do the things that Rome has taught you to do, like call Him God or to worship on the day that they worship sun gods, which is the first day of the week. Or that it's okay to have images and idols in your homes or statues in our nation or idols in, and, and remember behind every idol is a demon that we put on buildings because Rome has taught us we can Christianize things that are unclean and call them clean. That is so far from the truth. You cannot pray over a pig and make him clean. He is still unclean. You cannot Christianize anything. That is so 
taking something out of context and twisting it around. Yes, we are to pray over our food, but we are only to eat what Yahweh says is clean. And that which he says is clean, we can sanctify through the word and through prayer. You cannot sanctify what he calls unclean. Whether it's images and sun gods, you know, down here in Florida there's, a, there's an image of a sundial with a face in it. A lot of people put it in their homes. They have it etched into the stone. They put it in their pool, so on and so forth. Those are sun gods. You are being connected to sun god worship, to sun god deities. You cannot Christianize them, but Rome has taught us or has taught, tried to teach those that thought they were believers that these things were okay. And you may believe in Rome's deity called Jesus, but he is not, and that does not represent who the Hebrew Jewish Messiah is and what he did. He kept the Sabbath, not the first day. We've gone over that. So you may know the, a deity Rome calls Jesus, but that's not knowing the Hebrew Messiah. Or if you want to, you can know the biblical Hebrew Jewish Messiah and Savior, and his name is Yahshua. And he kept Torah. See, that's who I'm following. I used to be sold out on Jesus. I mean, I was a Jesus freak until one day my eyes were open and I saw all these things that I was taught that is not biblical. I saw that, that Rome changed the name in the scripture from Yahweh to Lord over 7,000 times. They literally changed it from the original Hebrew. And then I began to research about pagans. I began to literally read and study the commandments and I saw how I was living a lifestyle partially in rebellion because I didn't even know or understand his laws and commandments. And as I began to study his laws and commandments, just like if you will study his laws and commandments through Hebrew perspective and with an open repentant heart, you will see that we've been taught opposite of what is written in the scriptures. Yahshua kept Torah, and he will teach you to keep Torah. Yahshua kept the Sabbath and the feast days, and he will teach you by his spirit to keep them. Yes, you may, you may run across a, a minister, a rabbi, a pastor, whatever, an elder that, like myself, that may be teaching you, but it's still Yahweh's Spirit flowing through us to you to inspire you, to challenge you, to get you to think and research and examine the scriptures like the Bereans did to see if what we are saying is biblical. And I'll be the first to admit, I do not know all there is to know. Even yesterday, I was saying to my wife as I was praying, there is so much more to Hebraic biblical truth that we have not come to see or understand yet. And I desire to see and understand it. And I look into Yahweh to show me. I'm researching, you know, YouTube and Google, the other ministries that may have a greater understanding and are walking in greater light than I am so that I can learn it, first of all. So secondly, I can walk in it. And thirdly, I can impart it into you. He will have you do the same thing, meaning Yahshua. He will have you do the same thing he did. He kept Torah. He kept the feast. He kept the Sabbath. No idols. He, he rejected all man-made laws and commandments. He will have you to know his biblical Hebraic name. And we don't need to get in an argument of which is the true Hebrew name. Any Hebrew name, whether it's Aramaic or Paleo or whatever, I don't understand all of it. 
but nonetheless, any Hebraic, Bib Hebraic name was possible of what Yahshua was called in that day. The one thing for sure is he wasn't named after a sun god deity and after what Rome changed his name to be, meaning Jesus, because that name did not exist till the 1600s. And he will teach you, Yahshua will teach you, to live as he lived according to Yahweh's laws and commandments. So the choice is yours. Just understand this, that the de deity Jesus is not, and I repeat, not who the biblical Hebrew Messiah is. They, Rome, Jesus, they have different laws and ways and instructions than the Hebraic Jewish Messiah. One is biblical and can easily be found from the very beginning, Genesis, through Revelation. And the other just twists scriptures and pulls one out here and one out here. One, you won't find it at all in the Old Testament, in the, in the Torah. Now, you will find it referring to the Hebrew Messiah, but not to Jesus. One leads to a set of set apart narrow road that most reject, and the other leads down a path that is broad and easy to go, where everyone accepts. When you accept and receive, and you see that the biblical Messiah is a Hebrew Jesus. And for you to truly believe in him, you have to believe in his laws and commandments, his instructions, his ways, his Torah, how he lived, what he did. You have to follow his pattern. Many will persecute you for it. Many will reject you for it. I don't have one, I don't even think one. No, I have one. One old Christian friend that is still communicating and friends with us today. They never respond to none of our teaching, but at least they've not cut us off. But everyone else has. Everyone else has. They've deleted us. They've blocked us. They, they don't have anything to do with us. They think we flipped our lids. And we did. We came out of paganism and we came into truth. So, here's the other thing. The difference between the biblical Hebraic Yahshua, the Hebraic Messiah Savior, versus Rome's invented deity called Jesus, is Yahshua lives a pure, modest, humble, clean, holy lifestyle. The other... The other does not. The biblical Hebrew Yahshua, we live, and if we follow him, we will live as he lived, we'll do the things he did, we'll obey what he obeyed, Torah, we'll keep what he kept, and that is if the Hebrew Jewish Messiah is your Savior and Master. The choice is yours. True Biblical Hebrew Jewish Messiah or Rome's version who follows and worships sun gods who change everything they didn't like in scripture so it would fit their paganism and their pagan structure and their idolatrous and idolatry. It's up to you. I care enough and I love you enough in Messiah to tell you the truth as he is guiding me right now to minister this message to you. So I pray that you would make the right biblical choice, that you would do your due diligence and just, when you just think about these things, when you say you believe in the Hebrew Messiah, you basically 
will live like the Hebrew Messiah lived. You'll believe the things that the Hebrew Messiah believed. You'll do the things that the Hebrew Messiah did. But, see, many of us have been taught about this Roman Jesus who is really connected to sun god worship. And we are doing and living according mostly to what Rome has taught us concerning this, but we may mix a little things in there like prayer, reading the word, uh, reading our Bibles, um, singing praises unto him, fasting. You know, those are all biblical things that Rome does teach. But it's just a camouflage of what is really behind the scenes. And see, we need to discern the agenda of the enemy. Just like governments have agendas to get you to do certain things. They have an agenda that they're, they're not telling us about, but they have an agenda. Same way with Rome and paganism. They have an agenda why they mixed a little biblical truth with their paganism. They have an agenda. I fully don't know all of the agenda, but I know it's not Hebraic and biblical, so I reject it all. I won't have nothing to do with it, and I'll hold on to the Torah. I'll hold on to what I know is true. I will hold on to the name that is Yah's name. I will hold on to the name that I know is the Hebrew name of the Messiah. And I will reject any name that the was not part of the Hebrew culture. It's not just about a name, as I'm going to start winding down here. But it's about the name that is biblical. A name <clears throat> that is Rome's invention that is not biblical. Let me say it again. It's, it's not just about a name, but it's about the name, the name, that is biblical and about a name that is Rome's invention and that when you go to the original Hebraic scriptures, you will not find the name Jesus in it whatsoever. It had to be put in there by translators. One name literally walked and grew up in Jerusalem. And the other was never there because he is made up by mankind and is like someone's imaginary friend that doesn't really exist. But in that child's mind, he exists. In your mind, because you've been so indoctrinated into Rome's Savior's name, Jesus, in your name exists. In your name, you may think I'm wacko. But it doesn't really exist. And when you examine the facts, go to the Hebrew facts, do your research in the days when the Messiah walked the earth. Did they call him Jesus? Find any evidence. <clears throat> and you'll not find it. Now you'll find it in Bibles that have been translated by Rome's uh, translators, but you'll not find it in the original Hebrew scriptures. Yahshua is real. However you want to say it. If you want to say Yahshua, if you want to say uh, Yeshua, if you want to say Yahushua, there are different ways people pronounce it. And I'm fine with all those pronunciations. I'm not going to get caught up in the right pronunciation. But I'm going to get caught up in whether or not it's Hebraic. Because who knows? Maybe Yahshua isn't 100% accurate. I believe it is. But I wasn't there, so I don't know for a fact. I just have to go by what the Hebrew scriptures tell me. But I do know for a fact that it wasn't Jesus. Same way with Yahweh's name. Some people say it's Yahuwah, according to a certain... Hebrew dialect. And that could be so. I'm fine with it. I'm fine with it. But at one thing I know for sure, it's not Lord, which means Baal, and it's not God, which is a title that could reference 
demonic beings. I know that what I'm sharing with you is foreign and it's hard to swallow. But nonetheless, I would encourage you to research it with truth. I'm reminded of a prophetic word that I received in the 80s. And they said that I would teach things that would be like the highest form of mathematics. Most people would walk away confused because they did not grasp it. But they said there would come a day when people would grasp it, would understand it, and they would start grasping it and understanding it and receiving it little by little, and it would be like a light shines. And I hold on to that word. So I know that some of these things are foreign to you. Why? Because Rome taught you their theology and they did not teach you biblical, Hebraic, Jewish truth that is found in the Torah and in the life of Yahshua and the first believers and the apostles. Can you ever think a Hebrew, Jewish, Torah, keeping parent would call their son a Roman Greek name that's tied to sun god worship. And there is no way. There is no way whether it's the Messiah we're talking about or someone that lived in the in the day of Yahshua there and they had just had a son, a normal son, they would not have named him a name that was tied to sun god worship. They would have not named him some a name that was not part of the Hebraic Jewish culture. Excuse me, I got some bug biting me. Some fire ant. That's one of the dangers of being outside here. The answer is allowed no way. They would never have named their son a Roman Greek name. Some things just have to be pointed out before we see them. And see, have you ever done this? You've never saw something in the scripture. You've read it over and over and over and over again. And, and then someone teaches it to you. And then you wonder, why have I never seen this? Why have I, have I never saw that? And then from that day forward, it's just total common sense. And, but it didn't happen until someone pointed it out. And I'm just trying to simply point out these things about the Hebraic, Jewish, Biblical Messiah and Savior versus Rome's creative invention named Jesus. So... I want to just encourage you to think about all these things, to examine all these things, to read your scriptures, and to read the whole Word of God from Genesis through Revelation. Ask, the, I, ask Yahweh to open the eyes of your understanding and to just examine it, just base, basic examining the evidence will prove to you that the name of the Hebraic Jewish Messiah never was and never is Jesus. That's a, a, an invented name. It came from somewhere. There's, a, there's an agenda behind getting us to believe it. It was Rome's agenda to keep and to continue in sun god worship because Constantine was a sun god worshiper and he wanted to continue in that he wanted to put a silence to Hebrew culture and the Hebraic commandments and he wanted to put a stop to all that what he called nonsense and the only way to do it was to invent 
a new name for the Messiah, one that would cause people to accept and receive what they what their propaganda was, propaganda, what their theology was. And then so you can go out, get drunk, commit sin, sin so and so forth, worship idols, have gods before you. I mean, they literally removed out of the Ten Commandments not to have any gods before you, have any idols before you. Now, if that don't tell you something, I don't know what will. They changed his name, Yah's name. They removed it from Scripture and put capital L-O-R-D in there. And in the Hebrew, that means Baal. So, prayerfully and hopefully, something I shared inspires you, helps you, and just causes you to think. The, the word that kept coming to me while Yahweh was sharing this with me last night is to think, people. Just look at the evidence. Just think about this. Just think about this. A Jamaican would not name his son a Russian name. A Polish person would not name his son a Latin name. A Hawaiian would not name his son a African name. But an African would name his African son an African name. A Hawaiian would name his son a Hawaiian name. A Latin person would name his son a Latin name. A Polish person would name his son a Polish name. A Jamaican would name his son a Jamaican name. And a Russian would name his son a Russian name. And a Hebrew would name his son a Hebraic name. Case in point. Father, thank you for this word. I pray that we all would understand it, grasp it, and I pray that you would in impart it into our hearts, that you would change our minds, that you would renew our minds to your Torah, to your Hebraic scriptures. And Father, we ask you to forgive us of all the times that we've participated in Roman sun god worship instead of Hebraic truth. And Father, forgive us, and we renounce Catholicism. We renounce uh, Christianity and all the sun god worship theology that we've been involved in and we ask you to cover our iniquity with the precious blood of the Passover lamb and to set us free break every curse connected to that over our life and we thank you for grafting us into Israel we thank you for opening the eyes of our understanding we thank you that we will live as Messiah lived according to the Torah. And Father, we bless you. Yahweh, we worship you and praise you. And if you want to connect with us, Mark Pulley on Facebook or MeWe, um, you can also connect with us at our website, Yahweh, <coughs> Yeshua, um, YahshuaAssembly.com. And we pray Yah bless you. Yah make his face shine upon you. Yah do for you. And make a way for you where there seems to be no way. You have an awesome week in Messiah Yahshua.